Here's a review of the 2003 Ford Thunderbird. I've always wanted to drive this car. It's got amazing looks. It's very unique. It's a throwback retro vehicle. What's it like to drive? I'll tell you on the other side of the intro. Hit the subscribe button. Let's do this. Here it is, the 2003 Thunderbird. They made this car for about four production years from 2002 to 2005. <clears throat> it's a two seat vehicle. Now this particular one is a convertible. You could also get it in the, the traditional coupe or coupe for my visitors across the pond. Um, it shares a lot of things with the Lincoln LS platform as well as some some jaguar parts as well like i believe the steering wheel some of the instrument cluster in there is straight from a lincoln um, we have an awesome jaguar designed v8 very responsive uh, this particular one has 280 horsepower i'll get more into that later five speed automatic transmission does a pretty good job in this car um, but let's just get into the styling there's nothing really like it uh, this car has has like a neo retro look to it, which it was. It's funny because retro designs are really, really popular right now. Especially, I love motorcycles, so retro designs are really, really popular right now for motorcycles. Uh, sorry, I, I think I see a small mammal floating in the water, like right there. You can't see it, but a little crazy, a little crazy. Uh, there's another one. Holy crap! What is going on? You guys might be able to see that one. I don't know what it would be. Muskrat, water rat, I don't know. But let's get back to this car, something a little bit prettier looking. Um, all right, so back to this car. Headlights are awesome. It's got this retro design. There's nothing really like it on the road. Um, my opinion, it's very, very unique. And this car is gonna catch a lot of looks and stares if you're driving one of these. Uh, fog lights look amazing. This waffle is what I would call this waffle cone design print of a grill looks really good the thunderbird logo the lights look great the hood scoop looks great look at that oh my gosh i just love this car super cool you have this little it does nothing it does absolutely nothing except look cool you have the v8 emblem on the side and you have this very simple uh thunderbird wheels uh they're probably what they're 17s no big deal just look, going back this is baby blue color I don't know I'll probably have to look up what the actual color for this is it's like a robin's egg blue it looks amazing uh, and then back here on the back end it says Thunderbird you have a little parking light there oh yes oh yes dual exhaust gosh this car is just so cool so cool let me know what you guys think of the styling retro gas cap we got the, that line on the side of the body from that little grill piece, side grill piece, all the way to the, it fades into nothing on the back. And you have a strong line at the bottom door that goes all the way around the car. Uh, pretty cool styling, uh, I'm sure you guys would agree. Engine presentation is freaking amazing. I would give it a 10 out of 10 of this awesome V8. You got the logo, you got some design there on the hood, or I guess the, the cover of the engine. 10 out of 10 engine presentation is great. Nice job, Ford slash Jaguar slash Lincoln. So underneath the hood, we have the Jaguar designed V8 3.9 liter. It originally had 252 horsepower and 267 foot pounds of torque. Um, but in 2003 to 2005, that's cool that you can see the, the ground down there. How cool is that? They added variable valve timing and electronic uh etc etc i'll put exactly what it is um in the description but it, it increased the horsepower up by about 28 so you have 280 horsepower in this car and 286 pound foot pound feet of torque and it's a very very responsive engine i'm um, very very impressed with it and this engine presentation is amazing getting on the inside of the 2003 thunderbird Let's just take a quick little gander around here. <clears throat> now, when I first saw this car <clears throat> today, I always thought there was a back seat in these cars, but there's not. So you can see there's like this fiberglass here, which is super crazy. I don't, I don't 
Yeah, obviously the top would go down and this fiberglass would be there for, you know, aerodynamics and probably for sound and things like that. But it's super weird to have a big piece of fiberglass here in the cabin with you. So this style is so retro and I love it. Um, you can see all these lines on the door, not only the door, but the seats as well. And you see the nice little Thunderbird logo there. Some interesting stitches on the very circular headrest. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Traditional e-brake position, couple cups. Pretty small though, you're not gonna be able to fit your big things in there. Speaking of small, this is all the storage you get in the center console, which is next to nothing. It has some heated seats, two settings. You have a 12 volt here, which is your actual smoke slider. And then you have a charger 12 volt he over here, which is really forward thinking for them in my opinion. Uh, here is the button to loosen or take down the roof, which I'm not gonna do. Uh, actually, no, sorry. This is pro, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm sure you guys watching this video, some of you know a lot more about this car than me, and that's not surprising. Um, just let me know what this does. My guess is that it might um, automatically roll down the, the top after loosening this here, but I'm not gonna test it because it's kind of cold out. Um, here are your window switches, very Ford uh, slash Lincoln lock. Now you have this aluminum trim here. I'm gonna get close, it's actually textured and at first look, I thought it looked cheap, but since it's textured, I think it's kind of cool. And then down here is your little um, storage, your extra storage. You have more storage here in that center cubby. This button, I'm not 100% sure what it does. Um, I pressed it earlier and you can, you can lock it, but I think it might open up the trunk. Here's probably going to be uh, your hood. And then that's about it for there since the e-brake's in the middle. Here's your lights, I mean auto. That's interesting, the auto has different um, settings there. Here's your dimness, or dimmer off for the center. Mirror control is kind of hidden away. Uh, your wipers are here, which is kind of interesting. I'm used to wipers being on the other side, but uh, you have it here, as well as your blinker. And the center console here, pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't really need, I, I just love how the, the gauges are blue, uh, or the tacks are blue, just like the color of the car. This is kind of faded a little bit, this, the steering wheel. It probably looks like a white to you guys, but it's actually kind of like that blue teal color of the car. Uh, you can see the, the logo here has held up really well over the last 15 years or so. And then here... <clears throat> Let's just go over a little bit. I mean, you got four vents in here, one on each side. The nice Thunderbird logo there. Uh, there is your glove box. Uh, but pretty straightforward, very, very reminiscent of Ford and uh, Lincoln of this time. Um, not really much to go on there, but we do have your cruise control and then volume. And it looks like you could actually uh, connect your phone to this, which is pretty cool. Uh, for this era. So let's go ahead. I'm so used to getting guys going into the back seat and telling you I've never done a car review where I'm just in the front seat. Um, so there is the rear view mirror, which is it looks good, looks good. And then here is your slidable mirror as well. And it, I don't think it detaches. I'm not I'm not about ready to find out either. So I, I'm just gonna leave that there. And uh, let's fire her up. So traditional key. Hear this V8 purr. I think it's gonna help. And well. There you go, 36,000 miles. Um, so let's see what this baby's got. So there's a button here. This blue button opens up the blue trunk. And this has to be one of the smallest trunks I've ever seen and a fairly large vehicle. I mean, this is like borderline uh, <clears throat> Miata. I might actually think a Miata's trunk is a little bit larger than this. Um, I'm not gonna dig around too much, I'm seeing if I can open this up. So we got a battery back here and then a spare tire. And it looks like maybe some fuses as well. So that is pretty crazy that this trunk 
is as small as it is. Um, it looks really good though. Okay, we're getting off the lot, guys. Um, I'm going to have to put on the lights. And this is so bizarre. Now, we have stickers on the window, which absolutely kill my visibility. But you know what? YOLO. YOLO. So, obviously, rear-wheel drive. We got a V8. The suspension. Now, this car is very soft. When I was going through the parking lot, I was just, like, bobbling about. Uh, so the suspension, I can already tell you, in my opinion, is terrible. Um, but it's going to make for a fun ride, I'm not going to lie. Visibility in this car is actually kind of cool. Um, I'm so used to, you know, like, looking... Oh, these are some of the worst brakes I've ever felt. Holy cow. Back to visibility. Vi visibility is not bad. Um, it's just kind of unique how it is. Um, I mean, the, the steer, the, oh, that's a nice Mustang there. But the windshield is very unique in its um, shape. It's kind of oval. So that's kind of different. Um, but the brakes, they're, they're smooth, but you have to like stomp on them for, the, for you to get any feedback, especially, um, it's like the harder you push, like nothing really happens. Like I was kind of soft on the brakes there and it felt the same as when I pushed hard on the brakes, if that makes sense. So I'm really excited to open up this V8. Um, it's pretty torquey. It's crazy to think that, you know, when this car came out, like it probably had good power, uh, a respectable power for a V8. Like now, like that Mustang that just drove off as you guys saw, uh, that car has like over 400 horsepower from the V8 and this is like 280, which is just crazy. So um, I'm just gonna downshift real quick, put my foot into the pedal. There it goes. It's got good power, it's kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Now, for example, we have four cylinders today that produce as much or more power than this engine. But there's nothing that quite feels like a V8. A V8, especially a naturally aspirated V8, sounds really, really good. Um, and and it feels, it's just so smooth. It's hard to, hard to explain, but like the Lexus V8s are like a little slice of heaven. They're so smooth. and. I'm actually surprised by this Ford slash Jaguar V8. I'm gonna get in the throttle again. Downshift. It's not, it's not super fast, but there's something about a V8, like I said, it's smooth, and it demands res respect. More so than, what the heck? Oh, that was a, a Hyundai Genesis. Did you guys hear that? Obviously, so the road noise in this car is not good with it being a drop top. It's not good. It might be a little different, uh, a little different in the coupe version instead of the convertible version, but it's, yeah, it's a convertible. So what do you expect? Out here on the freeway, this car is actually really comfortable. Um, it handles the bumps really well. I wouldn't want to push this car hard at all. This is kind of like a Sunday driver type of car. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like an older LS in terms of just like it doesn't it doesn't want to be pushed. It, it's kind of wishy-washy with the suspension, uh, but it does feel like a. I'm not. I'm gonna say this, it does kind of feel like a premium car. Um, I mean, it is it is a Ford Thunderbird, but it's really a Lincoln slash Jaguar. Let's be honest, it's really a Lincoln or a Jaguar of its time period. So it's pretty high quality um, in terms of the feel of the car. Uh, just it, the sum of it, it's, it's worth more than the sum of its parts, if that makes sense, that this car. Now, what I recommend the hard, the hard 
sealing the coupe over the convertible. I mean, it depends on where you live. In Nebraska, in the Midwest, if you're looking for this car, I'd probably go with probably go with the, the coupe instead of the convertible. I mean, I hear every single vehicle that drives by me loud and clear. It, it, with the top up, it almost sounds like the top is down, if that makes sense. I mean, a cloth top can only do so much to buffet you and save you from the noise. So, <clears throat> like if I were to say, if you were, if you were driving a Miata and you lived in the Midwest, I would say the hard top is probably the way to go uh, because of the weather. Um, but, yeah, we're going to do a quick acceleration run. Why not? Um, three, two, one. Pedal to the floor. Shit. Okay. This is... This is way faster... Way faster than paper would say. Way faster than the numbers would say. Like, I... I was a little bit scared there. Once it downshifted into the gear, I was a little... A little scared that I was gonna, you know, go too fast. Um, I'm gonna have to do that again real quick. So I'm gonna back it off. I'm going 55, 3, 2, 1, go stop it. There it goes. There's 65. That's pretty exhilarating. I wasn't expecting that based off of the numbers that this car has. Right? It's 280 horsepower. Very impressive. Uh, wow. Okay. The T-Bird can go, she can scoot. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, brakes, guys, I'm not gonna go hard on the brakes. They have, they give me no confidence. This car is all about styling. It's also all about the V8. Which is, which is kind of what this car was, you know, back in the day, the old T-Bird. I mean, it was known for, oh, it's got a V8 and it's, it's, a, it's a looker. Oh, let's go. Let's do a quick acceleration. Little wheel spin. It's fun. What a fun car. You know, I thought I thought this car would be super boring to drive. Gosh, these brakes are really bad. I thought this car would be super boring to drive, and I thought the V8 wouldn't be very, I don't know, awe-inspiring. Rest assured, the V8 is outstanding. I don't... I don't know anything about this engine in terms of reliability. Uh, I know this car was in the shop. We were we got this car on trade in, and it was in the shop for like literally a month or two. Not our shop; it was a shop across the street because they couldn't find the part. They're like, "Oh, you know, we don't we don't have the part here, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, wow, I smell something." I hope it's not a bad thing. I'm looking at the temperature gauge. I hope it's not like... I don't know. Oh great, there's a police officer here at the park. Super duper. Oh wait, yeah, it's a sheriff. So, pretty cool. He's probably gonna pull me over since I don't have a back plate. But that's okay, I'll just show him my plate and tell him what I'm doing. Test driving cars. Um, but yeah, I almost smell like oil. So I'm not gonna push this car anymore. But anyways, this car didn't have a part on it um, for like a month and they had to make the part. At least that's what they said. We were waiting for this car, waiting for it to get in on trade because they didn't have a part for it. They had to fabricate the part because this engine, I guess, isn't uh, well supported or I don't, I don't know exactly what, what was wrong. It wasn't my trade and so I don't know all the details. I just know that if you're looking into this car, you know, support for this vehicle in terms of uh, parts, it might not be the best, but this car is cool. Oh, a couple of birds playing at the dock. How cute is that? Super cute, super cute. So with the sun setting, go ahead and park this bad boy and finish up this unique and fun review of this car. I've always wanted to drive the Ford Thunderbird. Overall, I was very surprised by this 2003 Thunderbird. It's a beautiful car, as you guys know. I mean, that's obviously subjective, but I think nothing else on the road looks quite like it, as you can see. Uh, pretty cool car. 
the V8 was the showcase, as you guys would expect. Um, it's not a handling uh, machine by any means, but man, this car, uh, the V8 is what this car is all about. But I'm gonna wrap this up because this, this Jeep behind me, they're actually doing some videoing of this Jeep that they got. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions about this really cool car uh, that they stopped making in 2005. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next review and peace out.